should be able to see my screen right now. Right in the morning, we had basically on the pound average earnings. Um, we're up 2.1. The pound still basically dropped. Climate count change minus 18. Uh, the same thing. Unemployment rate didn't no change, and then manufacturing sales 3.3 compared to 1.4 compared to the forecast is 0.4 right there. Um, cat again, CN, you, you do retraced a little bit. Uh, dollar cat same, and then building permits 1.17 CPI negative 0.2 core CPI. Well, it's point three actually no change compared to the forecast. Sometimes the forecasted one's a bit de deceiving. Uh, it's best just to have a look at the place on the previous one. Yes, it is green, but it's no change basically from there. Housing starts uh, is 1.18 million compared to 1.2. Crude oil inventories, look at that, from 3.9 to 1.3. So we're going to have a look into that too. So in a less than about 27 minutes, then we have FOMC economic projections, FOMC statements, federal funds rate, and then half an hour of that, there'll be a press conference. So it'll be interesting whether, that isn't probably, they won't change the interest rates, highly probable, you know, since the euro decreased their interest rates by, you know, they're in the negative, and New Zealand dropped their interest rates well by 0.25. So looking at intraday, so at the, you know, in the morning, yeah, they push it up all the way in 1765, was almost up like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 percent. And now prior to the FOMC, in terms of the uh, federal rate decision, now it is from 17265 to, to almost 200. So about 65 points. Likewise, similar with NASDAQ, right? So uh, I'm going to mute everybody else for now. Well, the Dow index, a uh, couple of things that we need to be looking at. I know we have higher low on this end. Um, so yeah, there's a higher low. You have lower highs on this end. But because of this very bearish candle, you still have lower low on, on this part. Just have to be aware we're coming to level of supply at this level. So, um, looking at the four hours, currently I'm seeing a confirmed peak right there is in the level of supply. So, you know, just have to be aware. I'm actually thinking more of. Uh, Going short the dollar. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of still a lot of uncertainty. It's not enough power, enough momentum compared to this. Just have to be aware of these forces right here. And that once again looks like in level supply at this point. Double check of that. High is ninety seven oh four. Ninety seven oh four three oh four five. 97.063.043.045. So, so we have a lower high basically from there. Hmm. Okay, uh, let's look at oil based on the report earlier today. So, came back up. Instead of a lower low, same thing, in my opinion, I am not. Um, bullish with this, and then it creates a lower high, and then basically another shorting. Currently, there's a divergence now from oil with the dollar index, which also doesn't make sense. Same amount of pin oil is currently in a uh, currently leading because UK oil is also the same uh, based on the news. Gold. Is the only one that is currently in um, 
pretty not divergent in terms of correlation, correlated, but not as much. And I believe there's going to be some form of a rebound coming in shortly. So the dollar index definitely is in divergent. It's okay, let's look at copper. Copper is remaining neutral. Let's look at bonds. Same thing. It's basically uncertain. They're just waiting for the interest rates or the Feds basically from here. Looking at the VIX, that should have. Uh, ooh, interesting. Okay, and the VIX created new lows as of this month. Uh, likewise, I, I believe this is going to come back up pretty shortly. Uh, for when it comes to the S&P, I am still not bullish. However, I can't ignore if this is too powerful, too strong. Um, still a higher high, I need a lower high in order for this to fully short. I have a higher low right there too. So, um, depending on what the Fed is going to do, if it comes back down here, then by tomorrow, uh, create a definitely new lower high. All right, so let's look at uh, the markets or potential trades. Uh, dollar Swiss, I'm actually more short with this, and she is highly correlated. Notice with the euro against the US dollar. Um, she's currently sitting. I, I can't ignore this very bullish candle on this end. So the odds and probability that this could potentially rebound to the outside is more than likely to happen. So this is the current trade I'm currently looking at. Uh, for those who are watching at this point, observing, part of the disclaimer, I'm not here to give you any form of advice. Uh, just simply um, giving you some form of educational purposes based on what I can see in the market subjectively. And then from there, is simply just to act and react, uh, whether to buy or basically sell. So for me, is to go long with the euro against the US dollar rather than going short with it. Okay, so this will be the plan basically for uh, the day in terms of going long. I'm still currently in at this point in time, so uh, probably I'll be not probably I'll be adding more in terms of the positions, you know, in terms of the trade. I'm still in from 108 to 88. Um, close some positions at one, almost 112, to be honest. So, and that was part of a retracement correction. Yes, it's still raising a lower low over here. I have, and I can see here there's a higher low. So there's more probability for me <clears throat> that this could potentially rebound to the upside. So just be aware though that in about 20 minutes, depending on how the market will react, the spread might increase quite a lot. So don't put your, your stops way too tight. Uh, have a bit of room. If you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. If you feel do comfortable, then just put in even just even a small trade if you wish to, and just simply follow your set of rules basically from here. Okay? So uh, once again, this is basically what the trade of the day is going to be. Okay, looking at 30 minutes, and I'm going to go for the five minutes, and voila. Okay, so there's definitely some form of activity there.
Right, so just put another um, test rate over here. And just basically wait. So it doesn't matter 20 odd something minutes basically from here um, to while we're waiting on it. The other one, yeah, I know there's quite a few actually. The dollar yen is also pretty good. And then let's go back up to daily for a second. Uh, dollar yen has a potential that by the end of the day, if it chooses to, then head back to 114.42. Euro yen is another one. So here's the euro again, the Japanese yen. I believe this also can make at least about 100 pips to the upside, even probably and beyond. Um, as a form of a correction. Okay, we trace it on to the 50, heading back up. Can lead back to around 50, probably even perhaps a 62. And then from there, either it will continue to drop more. Right, so that's uh, also a good one right here. There's on five minutes currently retracing at this point in time, however, creating a new high. So there's uh, definite potentiality over the two, four hours. Looking pretty neat at this point in time. Still a bunch of higher highs currently breaking out of, of the convergence between the two and also bouncing off from the primary uptrend. So, um, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. But definitely, this is. Uh, one of my favorites. Let's look at pound against yen. Pound is currently weak. Just be aware um, because there is also reports coming on. In, I think in about a month or two. So the law of that 55, 48. Still basically a higher low. Can't ignore this. It's, this is way too powerful, too strong. Uh, there's a lot of force in there. Yes, the price and level demand. I'm more of a I'm more bearish than bullish actually with the with the pound. Okay, so um, there's no way that this can sustain even to go above 170. To be honest, so um, uh, I'm bearish with that. All right, let's go to Aussie against the US dollar. Um, currently, basically tanked. Fred, I think there's more room depending on what the how the market is going to be. And now it's just a form of a correction. Gold is basically in its neutral state, likewise for copper. And based on the four hours, also very bearish right there. Or the price and level demand at this point in time. So potentiality, still lower or low, more of a continuation, highly probable. So we're just basically waiting for that. Pound against the US dollar. So likewise. On this end, still lower lows, no lower, no higher lows. Yes, higher lows from here to there, but it's just too strong. Might be in the pound can drop all the way down to 139. And so, uh, so still bearish with the pound against the dollar. Looking at, at Kiwi against the US dollar, um, stabilizing itself. At a level of demand, still of that one, 75.1, 76.4. Hmm. Okay, still have a lower low. Still very forceful, very forceful candles. Mm, no go. Okay, so stay away. Dollar CAD. CAD just retraced a little bit uh, because of the news and what they basically had. So, um, which may also make sense. It's only a lower low. I need a higher low here too. Yes, it was strong for the past two days. And if the price could come back down 132. So if the dollar is going to be weak, then this is going to fail further. Okay. Now CAD, CAD yen, same thing. 
it's just kind of your tracing as well. Uh, that's based on the news, so the Canadian dollar is a bit too stronger, hence because of oil. Oil is up, it's like crazy, right? So, hey, Swiss yen. Um, Swiss yen, sorry, Swiss, uh, Swiss yen, you have a higher high, you have a lower low. It all depends. I would have preferred the price can come back down to 1 to 13, to be honest. So, but if gold goes up, then this is also going to continue all the way to 116. Dollar Swiss. Um, bearish with actual dollar against the Swiss, so um, odds and probability. Continuation all back down in 97.15. Approximately about 160 pips to the downside, all the way down to about 180. The error of demand is highly probable. Okay. So, for members, choose a pair and create, you know, we have less than 12 minutes, create different strategies of what you want to create. So, for example, mine is uh, the, the euro against the US dollar, um, and based on a shorter term time frame, actually, or the longer term frame. Right, one error. Um, thing that you've got to be aware is simply this lower low, but I have that higher low, so the next technically 111 all the way up there is highly probable. Actually, first thing first out, we'll technically can see why we'll switch. Let me switch. I'll call it zero in. And go from there to look at the unit quickly. Swiss is good to see. Okie uh, Yeah, I'm going to stick to the euro against the US dollar. I know it's going to be the first in, first out rule. Um, breaking out a level of supply at this point, 1087, or 111, 1125, pretty much around that area. Alright, so just choose which ones which that you like to trade. So remember, uh, technically you should already also have some form of an idea, part of your plan on which pair you want to trade. Okay, so I'll start from you, Dave. Which one will be will be trading at this point? Steve, Bonnie. I'm looking at the Euro US at the moment. Okay, got it. Uh, Steve, what are you are kind of looking at? Look at the euro. Okay. No worries, and Bonnie. Euro USD. Okay, great. And therefore, please create a plan. 
part of your strategy. Going long or short. Uh, out of curiosity, okay, Dave, are you long or short? Steve, are you long or short? And Bonnie, are you long or short? Probably long. Okay, cool. I will be long. All right. Um, for an M3 in a five minute time frame, there's an entry to go long right there from a higher low as well. So, however, the price is away from the 8 to 10, approximately close to 10 pips from the 111, 15 pips if you wish to. All right, so it's just a matter of waiting from here. All right, so the gold closed 0.1 of a percent. And officially, you have a higher low from there. And with that, um, <coughs> gold is going to rebound, therefore, dollar index could potentially fail as well in the next couple of days. It's two week, one, two, three, four days in a row. And so I'm still basically stick to that. And this one is also pretty strong at this point in time. Right, less than five minutes.
All right, two minutes. Spreads have increased a little bit to 1.4, 1.1. All right, good luck, guys. Uh, less than one minute. Right, spreads have increased. Two point four, two point five. Bingo, thirty nine. Both targets taken. Taken some. Thirty nine. Forty one, forty three, and I'm creating a lower over here. There's definitely more room in order for you to head back up. I know that they will feel that there too. They need to fill this gap some or sometime. Perfect. Fifty two, fifty three, fifty five. So you should at least may I have made seven pits right at this point in time. One awesome four sixty six approaching another supply bam sixty eight. In retracement. Okay. The new summary from Bloomberg is that the Fed of scaled back rate rise forecasts. 
Definitely no change. Bloomberg. are still coming, but the question is when. That's what they keep saying as well from last year, right? So um, there's still no no change at this point in time, but we just have to be aware. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, so we just have to be aware with that, uh, that they're still thinking of increasing interest rates. Um, however, when that happens, then we just have to be prepared. Let's look at what happened. So the markets also reacted to that. It makes sense. Currently, in synchronicity, which is good. Dollar index basically failed, right? So odds and probability that it may continue. However, they need to fill in this gap right here. So you can see some form of retracement correction. Mind you, there's another report at 11.30. So you have a press conference. It's really up to you or what you want to do from here from now on. Uh, I'm leaving my trades. I already took some at least. Well, you can see if I'd say 130, 170 earlier. But this was, I still have positions basically from even here and there. So they're just averaging it out uh, right at this point in time. Uh, however, like I said, it's an easy, easy peasy trade today. It's actually almost predictable uh, in terms of what it can do, right? So, from 180, so at least 80 pips. Currently, it should be operating 70 pips. That's a really good, um, good money in terms of momentum trading. Okay, so that's in less than basically five minutes, however, from point of entry, one, two, three, four, five, 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 ten, five minutes. Okay, so do you have any questions for me? Um, I believe there's pretty much nothing here unless you want to keep on going in terms of the trading itself. Um, like I said, I believe there's some, oh, here we go, some, at least 77 pips. You guys read the 77, close to about 80, 90 pips by now. So, uh, in my opinion, I believe this is going to continue, like I said, odds and probability in terms of continuation is more than likely, however, it creates a lower lower high than basically we're out, because I have to fill this gap as well. Okay, dokes. Now, anything can happen at 11.30, so just monitor your trades if you choose to leave it, but if you choose to take it, please take them, uh, at least you have money basically in the bag. Alrighty, so Steve, um, how many pips did you make? Uh, I made 50 pips. Great, Bonnie. Uh, Dave. I had target one at 21 pips and target two at 37 pips. Fantastic. Alright, and um, Bonnie, well, how many pips did you make? All right, not sure yet. You better make sure. Um, practice taking profits, please. And um, you should be at least close to 89 pips, depending on where you're at. I don't know what you did, Jim. Likewise for Charles. I know probably you just, if you guys are observing. Well, thanks for, thank you for coming along. Other than that, um, if you have no questions, please enjoy your morning. A uh, bit probably it's good for you, Dave, to wake up and make money now that you're awake. <laughs> Alrighty. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Okay, that, was a, that was a quick Thanks, one. Ray. Thank you. You're welcome. Ray. See you later Bye, today. Yep. See you later. Bye.